player than they've got right now. They couldn't get better friends as terrorists. If they were real terrorists, they would just leave it the way it's going. Tony Blair would get kicked out, and uh, his party as well, and um, and also the public would have their riots in the streets about the ID card. And but lo and behold, right on cue, when, when they needed him most, the mysterious Ben Laden's group blows up a few buses and things, and and this is all at the window, and now we're back to war again. It was a, a brand new faction that they didn't know existed. Yeah. The famous MI6 that had infiltrators in every group in the whole planet didn't know this group existed. And they have millions of cameras all over London, but not one picked them up doing this. It's so mysterious, we're all amazed. Yeah. And the public think they cannot bring themselves to imagine that there are evil people running their country that would go to these lands, kill their own people to justify a warfare. That's why this technique works. That's why it works. It is in our hands to leave these dark machines behind, the dark ages where they belong, and to press forward to cap a historic movement, 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 cap a historic movement towards a new world order and a long era of peace. The ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Here is an official poster for the European Union. It depicts the European Union Parliament building under construction, and it bears a striking resemblance to the Biblical Tower of Babel, as painted by Dutch artist Peter Bruegel in the 16th century. As the European Union associates itself with the Biblical Tower of Babel, let's read what the Bible says about the subject. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So, according to the Bible, with which the EU has associated its building, the Lord was against the oneness of the people, and the building of the tower, and so destroyed it. That tells us what God thinks of globalization. The EU picture shows the Tower of Babel is being rebuilt, which, biblically goes against the Lord's judgment. Also notice that the slogan, many tongues one voice, inverts the Lord's judgment, for he confounded their language for that very reason. Another inversion is, over the Tower of Babel are reversed pentagrams. Symbols are commonly reversed to express the negative. Famous examples are, the Nazis, inverting the good luck swastika symbol from right to left for negative purposes. 
also the cross being turned upside down to symbolize anti-Christian beliefs. In the EU picture, the pentagrams are inverted to make the goat of Mendes, which is a symbol used in satanic ritual. The EU's explicit anti-Christian references are worthy of note. Looking closer at the people in the bottom left of the picture, we can see, well, there's a bit of brotherhood going on there. And there's a mason. And notice all the people are square blockheads, apart from the round-headed baby, who hasn't yet had his circle squared. The blockheads are now bricks in the wall to make up the construction. It could be said, the blockheads have been chipped. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? <laughs> The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. Susan, I want to switch gears, talk about this other issue that's out there, the creation of a new North American Union, if you will, similar to the EU, the European Union. Uh, the president was asked about this today at the summit meeting with the leaders of Mexico and Canada. Uh, listen to what he said. I'm amused by the difference between what actually takes place in the meetings and what some were trying to, you know, say takes place. It's, a, it's quite comical, actually, when you realize the difference between reality and what some people are talking on TV about. All right, well, what is, the, what is the background? What's going on here? Oh, Wolf, there's a lot of talk in the blogosphere and uh, conspiracy theorists who believe that this uh, summit was really a secret plot, if you will, to establish a super government in support of big business, that even there would be some sort of super highway that would be traveling through all three of the countries. Uh, all leaders got quite a bit of a chuckle out of this one. We even heard from Prime Minister Harper, who said, look, they manufacture the rules uh, for manufacturing jelly beans are different than Canada as well as the United States. If you standardize the jelly bean, it's not a threat to Canada's sovereignty. So obviously uh, a lot of suspicion on the part of what this summit was really about but they assured people look there's nothing really to worry about a lovely time of the year to visit quebec uh, thanks very much suzanne for that report when we elect officials we expect them to act on our behalf when we get involved in cooperative frameworks with other countries for joint regulation of fisheries or rail transportation or the skies we're basically sharing our sovereignty with that government and outsourcing some of what we give our elected officials. The idea that the White House would respond, that this is on their website, uh, this involves uh, intricate uh, uh, workings uh, amongst the Commerce Department of this country the, and Canada and Mexico's, of course, uh, a, a regional prosperity and security program. Uh, this is absolute ignorance. And the fact that we are, uh, we, we reported this, we should point out, uh, when it was signed. But as we watch this thing progress, these working groups are continuing, they're intensifying. Uh, what, are, what in the world are these people thinking about? Well, they say, look, these are a declaration and an outline of our priorities. And when I called them today, Lou, they said that I, I was the first phone call they had received literally since the deal was first signed. So people are not paying attention, and they're letting them in fact, get away with this. You know, I, I was asked the other day uh, about whether or not I really thought the American people had the stomach to stand up and stop this nonsense, this direction from a group of elites in absolute contravention of our law, of our Constitution, uh, every national value. And I hope, I pray that I'm right when I said yes. But this is, I mean, this is beyond belief. All these new challenges are bringing together about the biggest restructuring we have ever seen, not just of the global economy, but of the global order as a whole. And 200 years ago, a famous British foreign secretary said that the new world had been called into existence to redress the balance of the old. In 1990, another old world ended, dominated by the Cold War, 
And people talk then, in 1990, of a new world order. What they actually meant then was a new political order. And it's only now that we can begin to understand that the world order 